because I had played it as a youth or it was a game that I thought was particularly good or it was a game that has been recommended to me over some period of time once or at some point in time. And, <clears throat> and of course, as I play new games that I don't own and I play with somebody else, if I really enjoy it, like Air and Armor, then I'll try and find a copy of it. And I'll typically... I'm not really prepared to pay too much for those titles, but I will, uh, you know, I will try and seek them out and... You know, if I can get it, that's great. Uh, one set that I did just buy that's relatively new to the market is Panzer. And because I trust Peter Gade, and so I'm blaming you, Peter, if this works out to be horrible, uh, you know, I, I managed to track down the three titles, and two of them are still in shrink, and the, the base module is punched. It's in you know, pretty much excellent condition. And for not a lot of money, so it was you know, less than a hundred bucks, uh, so that all worked out great. Uh, but that's a game that I haven't played or haven't seen much about, and it's the one that's giving me the most heartache and heartburn right now. So when I'm buying games, it, you know, and I do these you know, in the house videos, they're not, uh, sometimes they may not make a lot of sense as to why I'm buying them, and I'm going to show you a couple that uh, will not stay in this house very long. Uh, just because of the way they they came into my possession. But anyway, let's uh, let's let's start out with something I have been looking for for a very long time. Uh, I own the OCS, the Korean War, a title uh, which I'm will get to at some point, and I want to play this title from Victory Games that has got a great reputation and the rules are, are very well written in this. And this game is in wonderful condition, uh, mint condition. The maps are beautiful, the counters are very functional, and it comes with lots of, lots of good, uh, lots of good comments online, and I have friends who have played it. Uh, this is going to be a great game. I'm, I'm excited about the opportunity to play this little sucker. There's a Look at you know the color scheme of the maps. Uh, it's a typical it's kind of eighties style. Uh, it's probably made in eighty six, I think. So that's going up on the on the top shelf up here. We'll take care of that guy. <coughs> you know I picked up Eisenbach up, but I wanted to put that in the list of the time we got that. That is like putting on uh, an old glove that's been or an old shoe that's been resold and refitted and refurbished. It, it it was just a great experience to open that box up and uh, crack the counters out, clip them, and uh, play a scenario. Uh, my counter, my set is uh, very worn. I've played that uh, series quite a bit. So I enjoyed that. Now, I think I mentioned this to you last time, uh, but this is uh, Aspen Essling, which is uh, a battle that I now own. This is my third title that I own on this battle, which is all related to. Napoleonic Warfare in 1809, and uh, it's uh, kind of the precursor to Wagner. So, I think we've we've had a conversation about this. It's from Vivictus, uh, English translation. I picked it up on sale. It should be an interesting game, and I'm looking I'm looking at this battle uh, for a number of different reasons. But we'll get into that when we actually start talking about that. Battle. Oh gosh, and I already told you about this guy, so that can go. So see, the list, the, really, the list is not that big. That was uh, another OSG title. <clears throat> this guy... I purchased this guy because I was buying Air Armor from uh, a guy in Canada. And the shipping was going to be ridiculous. So, and would make the price of uh, Air Armor, which was very, con very convenient price, uh, unacceptable. He had a bunch of other games for sale, and I had been looking at Edelweiss for uh, quite a long time. 
And it's a case blue, it's looking at the case blue operation in World War II with the Germans and Russia. And I thought, you know, this would be cool. We can, we can, we'll have a look at this. It's kind of a big game, but we'll, we'll jump into it. So I open up the, the standard rule book, and, uh, which has no page numbers, just case numbers. And the very, here's the very first thing I see. You see the counters, how uh, they have, uh, where there should be descriptions of what the, the different numbers mean? They have case reference numbers. Ooh, it's not a good sign. I'm just telling you. This may be the simplest game in the world to play, but I'm just telling you, this is not well thought out, well laid out. And it's an older game, so we've got to kind of roll with the punches on that bad boy. Uh, map art, pretty nice. You know, uh, trees, hills, woods, caucuses, all that sort of good stuff. Some open plains and rivers. Uh, unfortunately, in, in being shipped, this thing was all set, sorted and organized and extremely well packaged, but somehow, the one corner that didn't have a piece of tape on the counter tray managed to, uh, because of the rough handling from Canada Post and US Post, uh, managed to displace all of the counters. So I've got to go through the sorting exercise before I even get started on the rules or anything like that. Oh, and here's the actual module rules. So another 30 pages. This is a 50 plus page rule uh, digest. Um, I'm really not excited about this. It does, however, have some interesting ideas in it about how the political uh, motivations of both of the antagonists are, uh, are portrayed in the game. So I'm curious about how all that will come. But this may not, this, we may not get this to the table. If someone uh, sends me an email or I post it up for sale, uh, it'll be at a fair price and uh, it, I will, it'll be out of, out of the door. All right, uh, let's talk about <coughs> Air and Armor. I'm on my third play of this game in the last three months, and it, I'm going to try not to kick the camera. It is... The first two plays we played the first time, we played wrong. The second time we played it correctly, really enjoyed it. I felt immediately after the game that there was a method that you could use that would allow you to be successful. And that was the way to play the game using the mechanics of the game. And I don't think the Soviets could lose if you played that way. As I'm starting my third play of the game on Vassal with a new chap that I met, uh, I'm having second thoughts about that. And I think there's a, there's, there's a, a variability and a replayability there that's greater than, than what I perhaps first thought after our second play. So, uh, I will have more input on Air and Armor later, once I have more of this standard game that we're playing under my belt. And we played with all the advanced rules, which are very, very straightforward, actually. It's all basically a handful of tables and a couple of little paragraphs. It's super straightforward. Uh, Air Armor is interesting because it takes the uh, company-level strength and allows you to hide that strength underneath the individual counters in the form of a chip that you rotate around to say how many companies are in that particular hex with the counter. Nice idea, so there's this hidden strength capability. Uh, headquarters are very important because they allow you to execute commands, uh, whether it's going to be a hasty attack, a move, or an assault, uh, or be in reserve mode. And there's also the, uh, uh, allow they allow you to coordinate artillery fire. I think it gives uh, probably more, maybe, maybe not more, but it gives a proper weight to artillery in combat, particularly in modern combat. Okay, so command, headquarters, artillery. Artillery is very powerful in this game if it's used correctly. Uh, it takes into the con takes in the concepts of doctrine for the Soviets. Soviets can't just go running off doing things. They've got to pick a lead unit for their assault. They've got to uh, keep their uh, regiments and uh, brigades or regiments and the division all kind of within a, within the boundaries of a certain uh, parameters or range parameters. Uh, gives the fle command flexibility to the NATO forces as well. Really like that. And brings in layers in air strikes, layers in choppers, both for Apaches and Hinds and things like that for both sides. Excellent, really, really interesting and engaging and tense gameplay. 
uh, you re and it's very dynamic and there's quite a bit of maneuver, quite a bit of uh, range on the units. Uh, no supply elements because you're dealing with two hour turn cycles. So that, it all works very, very well and I'm very impressed with it. So I probably oversold it to you. It's from West End Games and the rules are quite well written. There are a couple little niggles that we, we got confused with. We played it wrong the first time. Uh, but you know, you put three dumbasses in a room and that can happen. So uh, enjoyed this. If you can get a copy for 20 bucks, I think it's a steal and I think you'll get four, five, six plays out of it and that makes it five bucks a play and you're, it's gonna take you three or four hours to solo to play this, probably even more actually. Uh, Vassal module for it as well, so that's good. Uh, let's, let's leave Panzer to last because I'm probably, you know what, I'm not gonna, uh, I'm gonna have to pause the video because I wanna talk about Panzer, maybe in a separate video, who knows, I don't know. Yeah, I wanna get on my soapbox about uh, Panzer a little bit. Uh, I'm a little, I have a few nickels. So we'll leave that for later. I, I mentioned I have the whole system here, so we're, I'm looking forward to playing more of this game. I really like the story and the narrative that come, uh, comes out of this. I, I do have some concerns about how the rules are structured and written, and that may just be me, but it really feels like it's written for advanced war gamers or someone who, oh, yeah, I play ASL, so yeah, I, I play Panzer in my spare time. That's kind of how I feel. That's how the rules are, that's how the rules are written. Versus for the rest of us regular war gamers who just play war games. I like compl complicated games. Don't get me wrong, but um, I think this is more complicated than it needs to be. And there's some structural issues with the rules. Most of the wording in the rules are fine, but we'll talk about that later. I want to, sh I want to share some examples of, uh, you know, how to do combat stuff like that. Just you know, chit chat format with the, the data cards and things like that. So excited about this. I'm hoping there's some great stories come out of this, so we'll see. Uh, yeah. I kind of just bought this uh, when I picked up the Korean War thing. Once again, it was one of those, you know, kind of buy two and get a better price thing. I'm not sure I made a good choice here. I'm starting to think this might be another the most dangerous time. And all my buddies kind of laughed at me when they said, Oh, you bought that game? That's the game where all the kings die every turn. And that's the most exciting thing that happens. So I'm hoping that's not the case, but this may not last very long here in the house. And the piece de resistance. Yeah, Space Hulk, baby. It's because, you know, you've got to have some fun and you've got to be goofy and you've got to get your kids engaged. And so that is a game that I've been looking at for a long time. And is that I have that game now, and I've got the Sergeant's uh, Red Devils coming. Uh, those two miniature games I'm hoping will help spark some interest for my kids to play games with me. This was great because my 9-year-old, 11-year-old, and 13-year-old all had a good time. They all bitched and moaned about the one chance in six to hit their Space Marines. Why can't they just keep firing and kill the bad guys? So that was cool. Uh, we had to do a lot of re-rolling and uh, allow for a lot of mulligans and things like that. So we had to take the OCD Wargamer guy hat off for a second. Uh, we had, so we had a good time with it and so I'm excited to play some of those scenarios with them. Uh, they want me to paint all the models and stuff like that. So we'll see what happens. We might give them that project. That might be fun for them to do. So that's the haul from the last probably two months or at least 45 days. Uh, right now, uh, I'm playing Blocks in the East and I think we're about to wrap that up because I think the Russians have broken. I think we cracked the back on the Russians early, which is always my intention with uh, East Front games is to uh, hit the victory condition as early as possible and, and damn the losses and go for it because I don't like playing Eastern Front games where I'm defensive as the Germans. I don't know what it is, but it just seems to me I need to be blitzkrieging. If I ain't blitzkrieging, I'm not having fun. So that's a little mental block that I have there. Uh, up on the magnet board, we've got the patrol game going. That's play by poll. So if you're interested in uh, not learning new games, but experiencing games and uh, experiencing, experiencing them through the metaphor of the video and pictures and voting to uh, see what happens to one particular side where you'll be the uh, commanders. We, we have a game going. It takes a long time to play because I've got to 
put the poll up, get your votes, translate that into the orders or the moves for the team, record that information, play my turn, do all that exercise, and then come back and report it back to you and ask you what you want to do next for your guys. And I try and give you just enough information about the rules so you can make a decision in the context of the game. So it's kind of cool. Uh, so we're doing that. Uh, I got uh, Berlin 85, which uh, Enemy of the Gates, which is a last minute uh, throw it up and play it because it looked good. And I, I got all excited about it. I've played two or three turns. I'm on, yeah, I'm on turn three now. It's a really interesting game. I, I'm surprised how uh, robust the defense is of the uh, of the uh, NATO forces, the US and NATO forces. Uh, we had some surprise losses with the Soviets, so we'll see what happens. They've got lots to lose, so it's okay. There's that, and uh, what else am I playing at the moment? Well, I'm obviously playing Panzer. I'm in the first, my first full scenario of that. Uh, with advanced rules. The, the basic game is really, I'll talk about that later, but it's not really that uh, engaging. So that's the, uh, that's the update. Uh,